<sighs> Welcome back to the show. Mike Sempervivi, Wrestling Observer Live. We got my summer edition Red Bull here, the strawberry apricot one. If you've got a, a drink, you may need to open it up right now. Especially if you're listening to Vince and your your name is Vince McMahon or John Laurinaitis. You better fix yourself a stiff drink, although being stiff is what seemingly has gotten you into some trouble. The Wall Street Journal reported... On Wednesday, the WWE's board of directors is investigating a secret $3 million settlement that Chief Executive Vince McMahon agreed to pay to a departing employee with whom he allegedly had an affair, according to documents and people familiar with the board's inquiry. The January 2022 non-disclosure agreement bars the former employee who was hired as a paralegal in 2019 from discussing her relationship with Mr. McMahon or disparaging him. The board's investigation, which began in April, has unearthed other older non-disclosure agreements involving claims by former female WWE employees of misconduct by Mr. McMahon and one of his top executives, head of talent relations, John Laurinaitis, a.k.a. Johnny Ace. The journal could not determine how many previous agreements were being scrutinized, although this morning Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio noted that it was several. The board's outside counsel is still collecting information about the other NDAs, but has determined the payments totaled in the millions of dollars. This outside counsel is reportedly New York-based law firm Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett, and it is being retained by the eight members of the board who are not related to the McMahon family, all of the McMahons, Linda, Stephanie, Vince, and, of course, Paul Levesque. Uh, the inquiry is being spearheaded by former Sony Pictures Home Entertainment executive Manjeet Singh. The board's preliminary findings are that Mr. McMahon used personal funds to pay the former female employees who signed the agreements, including an allegation against Laurinaitis. The journal also added that the, quote, law firm is assessing WWE's compliance and human resources programs and company culture. Neither McMahon nor Laurinaitis have responded publicly, but McMahon's longtime attorney, Jerry McDevitt, said that the former paralegal had not made any claims of harassment against McMahon and that no money was paid by the company itself. Now, here's a little bit of a timeline on what has taken place so far. March 30th. This is the day that the board received the first in a series of emails from an alleged friend of the woman in question. Uh, it alleges that McMahon initially hired the woman at a salary of $100,000, but then doubled that salary to $200,000 after beginning a sexual relationship with her. It also alleges that McMahon, quote, gave her like a toy. Unquote to Laurinaitis, adding, My friend was so scared she quit after Vince McMahon and lawyer Jerry paid her millions of dollars to shut up. Now, some things to break down out of that McMahon giving her like a toy to Laurinaitis. What does that mean exactly? Uh, the story says that the woman moved from the legal department in 2021 to become an assistant to Laurinaitis in talent relations. So how sinister is that phrasing from this woman? Um, does it mean she was transferred with the expectations that she would enter a relationship with Laurinaitis, who was married, by the way, to the mother of, of Nikki and Brie Bella still? Uh, does it mean that the woman was discarded unceremoniously when the relationship with McMahon was ended and that she was shifted over there to, to that part of the building did she receive a raise due to that affair? And that might be the most important thing of all, because while McMahon may have settled these cases with his own money, his relationship, if she got a raise while while being there because of this reason, it, it could be a misappropriation of funds to help pad an employee's salary for an unethical reason. 
And speaking of ethics, the journal also spoke to people who worked with the woman at WWE, with some of them noting that she had, quote, fallen on hard times before joining the company and spoke of needing extra money. She said she had a law degree but had never taken the bar exam, telling colleagues that her career got sidetracked while she tended to a sick parent. Now, a cynic could say that maybe this woman was pursuing Vince after she got hired. Maybe she needed to pay off debts. Maybe she was just looking for some sugar and she ended up finding it. And one could be cynical and say that. But that, of course, runs completely polar opposite with what we know the emails say. And it also runs against what we know of reality when it comes to these situations, these more often than not, very toxic inner office relationships, especially between a boss and a, 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 a employee. And we know the pressures and the consequences that end up happening for those in the subordinate position. So that's what a lot of speaking out was about. So if you know somebody's down on their luck and you know that person's in such a place where, you know, they could end up believing that not only their job performance, but that their sexual usefulness determines their livelihood. Like, you know, it, again, it may not, you know, your morals may be different, but if you're looking at this from a business point of view, you can certainly understand why there is going to be concern from the board. But we'll get back to the timeline here, because on then May 19th is the, the next key date. Stephanie McMahon announced that she's taking a leave of absence from her role as chief brand officer. McMahon wrote on Twitter while she was taking leave, she looked forward to returning. Brandon Thurston over at WrestleNomics reported Nick Khan would be taking over most of her duties and Dave and Brandon Brian on the shows talked about her day-to-day -day duties being broken up among several people that were already there. Well, fast forward five days to May 23rd, WWE posted a job listing to fill Stephanie's position, which seemed like a complete 180 from everything that was being reported with how her duties were going to be delegated. Then we find out the weekend of June 3rd through the 6th, I'm not sure exactly what date that it came out, but the, the Business Insider article by Claire Atkinson, where she reports that Claudine Lillian, who was only hired in April of last year, was being replaced as a senior VP and the head of global sales and partnerships. Catherine Newman is then hired on, I believe it was the sixth uh, to fill that position, which according to a press release, she worked for Manchester United Marketing, and now she would oversee marketing, brand, content, community relations, creative services, and photography, I think is how everything broke down. And what we can break down out of that is Atkinson also reported that Stephanie was being replaced in her corporate roles as part of a shakeup being instigated by Vince. The story featured a quote from a company insider of Stephanie's who seemingly questioned her performance, saying, quote, we weren't seeing that growth. When somebody is moved out of a company, it's usually the result of something not working. We took stronger control of that a few months ago. And as was pointed out almost immediately, since that was a call that came from inside the house and there was no reported pushback about Stephanie's re performance or that it was better than what was being indicated from anyone, much less Vince, it started kind of coming across to people that he had stamped that as an official thought of the board and of himself. So raises the questions, why is her position being filled from the outside when it looked like it was going to be a temporary designation? You you know, what was not actually working out here? How ineffective was she in the position? How does she feel about how everything went down? Much less Claudine Lillian. Uh, who knew about this case with Vince and what was being you know, given to the board? Who knew about it and when? Stephanie would certainly seem to know. So does one leak deserve another? And I'm not saying anyone in particular uh, it leaked anything, but obviously somebody spoke to the journal and it seems like a bunch of people have seemingly spoke to the journal. They've gone out and talked to several people, at least one person on the board. So hmm. a lot of people's conspiracies yesterday. You know, I asked for some wacky conspiracy theories uh, on my Twitter feed, and most of them centered around Nick Khan or, or Stephanie because, you know, palace intrigue and. Frankly, it's low-hanging fruit, so it, it, it's easy to come up with a conspiracy as to why Stephanie or Hunter would be upset. But someone leaked that story to the journal, and others have started talking about it once the journal approached them. So 
You know, where the smoke came from, I don't know. June 12th, that's the day that the Wall Street Journal reports the board received a copy of Vince's NDA with the woman that paid her upfront $1 million and $2 million over a period of five years. And according to the journal, near the outset of the inquiry, lawyers for the independent directors asked WWE, Mr. McMahon, and Mr. Laurinaitis to turn over complaints or allegations about any relationships the executives may have had with company employees. In recent days, the investigation Investigators learned that other non-disclosure agreements involving allegations against Mr. McMahon and Mr. Laurinaitis. Hmm. Several. Not anywhere near a surprise, though, because the thought of Vince McMahon being a serial philanderer and adulterer, adulterer isn't really a shock. The thought of him doing it in his 70s can be a shock in, a, in another completely different way, so don't think about that. But, you know, Vince, can he survive this? Absolutely. And you know what? I think he probably will, relatively unscathed. He holds 80% of the company's voting stock. He has an incredible amount of juice amongst the other business and financial types. I think people that would look at this from the outside who are in the corporate world would maybe cringe a little bit because in their world, nothing like this would ever fly. But when it comes to Vince's world, he seems to be able to operate in his own bubble. So we'll have to see what happens. In its regulatory findings, WWE lists the potential of a CEO leaving as risk for investors. And we know they don't like to have their money messed with. Who may not be so lucky? John Laurinaitis. But we'll have to see how that plays itself out. And Vinny is driven all the way here. And his camera's not working. Oh, cool. Classic. It's pointing at the back of the TV. All Riveting. right. Yep. We go that way. Yeah, nope. I, wrong way, bro. 180 degrees oh, the wrong way. Oh. Yep. We don't need two cameras on me. Hey, oh, here yeah. he is. By the way, you need a good nose hair trimming. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.